Welcome, everyone, and, and good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, uh, depending on uh, what, where you are right now. And uh, welcome to this uh, open day event, which is uh, very open in format. Uh, my name is uh, Filippo Cervelli. I am the um, convener of the MA programs of the East Asian uh, Languages and Cultures Department. Um, and together to, today with me is uh, Dr. Xiang Lu, who, also, who teaches uh, with us and researches in, um, in uh, contemporary Chinese studies, and then she will be able to tell you more about what we do. Um, I will uh, I just received the, uh, unfortunately, the uh, apologies of uh, Dr. Giselle Diskirch, I, our head of department, who unfortunately uh, could not be present today uh, because of uh, health, re um, some health re issues that so hopefully are resolved soon. And uh, so I will also talk you um, briefly through what uh, what she's uh, what she had prepared for today and refer you to uh, her for all uh, further more specific questions uh, that you might have. Uh, Dr. David Fell will also join us uh, at, um, at a later point during the presentation. Um, to, to give you more uh, information and uh, answer to your questions on um, specifically the MA in Taiwanese studies. Um, so I think we can uh, start. Uh, we have uh, a short presentation to give you the, the basics. So yeah, um, can you all see that? Uh, can you write or you know, just answer or, or write. Yes, we chat. can see it. Yeah. Thank you, because uh, last uh, last time I I did that, there were some uh, issues with uh, with the formatting being shared. But I'm happy to know that this is uh, working well. So uh, again, welcome to the um, this postgraduate open day presentation uh, for our department, East Asian Languages and Cultures. And today uh, I will walk you through our the main degree offer that we have at the postgraduate level. So first of all, um, I'm. this is our, our meme. Um, and I think, you know, it's very famous and uh, you can make your own uh, choices about who who represents which which language, which regional expertise. My, my best bet is from left to right to have uh, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, and Taiwan, but uh, I'm sure my colleagues and other students have their own pick. And, also uh, studying with us, you will uh, make your own ideas about that. So this is the uh, very uh, brief overview of the so of the, the schematics of what we offer in the post-credit uh, taught uh, domain in our department. So uh, as you can see from a glimpse in our department, we, uh, we teach languages and cultures uh, from around the Chinese, Chinese and Inner Asia, Japan, Korea, and also the Taiwan studies is affiliated with us. So um, the MA programs in Chinese, uh, Japanese and Korean studies, uh, the one year programs, they are convened by me and you can find uh, my email address here. So any questions related to uh, the study side in there uh, can be um, addressed to me. Then we have the uh, MA uh, in combination with, with the language or other programs that can be combined and the intensive language program, which is a longer program. And um, you will, uh, we will have a slide uh, later on with uh, the different uh, conveners and contact details for each language there. And then the MA in Taiwan studies. And as I mentioned, um, Dr. Fell will join us later too. Uh, talk more about that. Um, so, why come to study at SOAS? Right, um, this is a this is a great question. There are um, programs sometimes uh, can hear that if you want to learn, you know, eleventh uh, century Japanese, then go to Oxford. However, uh, it's at SOAS we have a really wide offer and expertise on a very wide range of subjects that uh, make unique combinations if you want to know more about uh, modern and contemporary sides and different interdisciplinary aspects that uh, relate to a particular area of interest but or even 
um, transnational, transcultural aspects on East Asia. So we are very strong at that. And we have um, great uh, colleagues and members in the teams that whose expertise is very interdisciplinary and, and focused. So SOS is in ranking uh, steadily in the top 10 in the for uh, modern languages. We have most comprehensive programs in Europe because you're you not only do you focus on one region, but you also get a wide you can tap into a wide pool of expertise in different disciplines related to China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and you also have the chance to um, integrate them with the study of other courses across the school, which you know is is very strong in um, the areas of Asia, uh, um, the Middle East, and Africa. So you you can have a focus on East Asia and also have um, knowledge in in other areas too. Um, we have uh, largest concentrations of specialists outside of the region of belonging. It's, for example, I am in the Japanese section. We have um, um, expertise in literature, history, pre-modern and, and modern literature, theater, linguistics, uh, cinema, same, uh, same for Chinese and across other departments, also sociology, anthropology, history of art, and so on and so forth, and politics. Um, so this is this speaks to our very interdisciplinary approach, and which I think it's a, it's a unique it's a unique combination. And also one important thing is that you also get to study in London, which is a, a thriving um, city with lots of uh, cultural events from all over the world. So that is also uh, a good environment to pair up with the, with the more let's say formal study that you do at uni. Um, so very briefly, uh, in terms of the MAs in Chinese, Japanese, and Koreans, these are uh, one-year programs, uh, which are for which you they can also be taken part-time, spread across two or three years, depending on your uh, necessities. The uh, general structure for all of these programs um, programs is to um, complete a total 180 credits, of which. 60 credits are uh, spent for the dissertation. So as, as you know, this is a, um, a research project of 10,000 words that you can, uh, that you select um, based on um, one of loosely, more or less loosely based on one of the modules that you take, and then you can develop your own research project. And we have a wide um, array of, of experts that can follow in that, follow you in that. Uh, project. Um, so the other uh, unmoving uh, part is the 15 credits of the core module. Um, this is called uh, Connections and Intersections. It's, it's a module that master students usually, usually take in the first term of study. Um, and uh, this is uh, a module that I am convening currently. And it looks at uh, area studies and different aspects uh, intersecting with the study of East Asia. So we, we problematize the categories of East Asia, the study of area studies, and then we have uh, a, a wide ar array of lectures given by members in our departments um, that have a wider uh, scope than just one regional interest. So looking at intersecting themes and issues uh, in the study of, of modern East Asia. So for example, uh, we, can, we have, we have uh, this year uh, a lecture on the, um, the world of uh, Sinaitic scripts of Chinese characters uh, spreading across Asia, shared literary traditions, uh, hybridization and transnationality um, aspects in popular culture, um, modern history, Cold War, and, and so on and so forth. And this is also a module that uh, contains a study and a workshop aspect on MA dissertation. So where we, the aim of the module together with the specific outcomes of it is also to get you started in developing your own research project and think about the dissertation. And we offer guidance and workshop as part of the course. So taking, taking the dissertation and the core module credits out, then we have 105 credits that chosen uh, students can choose from a very wide range of modules. So um, I will not go into the specifics now because these can also change, but uh, you, you can choose modules from um, 
those that relate to your uh, region of choice. So if you choose Japan, it's um, modern Japanese literature, pre-modern Japanese literature, cinema, history. Uh, if you choose China, it's uh, modern Jap uh, Chinese literature, Chinese society, Chinese cinema, or the same with Korean. And then uh, others can be taken from um, language courses at all levels uh, that we give in Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, and uh, also to a, to a lesser extent uh, from modules that you can choose from uh, the, the offer of, of the school of, of SOA. So it could be uh, one module in uh, uh, North African history of art, for example. Um, so I would like to point out that uh, prior language knowledge of either Korean, Japanese, or Chinese is not a requirement for us. So um, you're welcome to uh, bring your, uh, if you have certain knowledge of the languages uh, to, to the table for your studies, for your research project, of course, if you use uh, sources in, in languages other than English, that is also very welcome. But uh, it is not a requirement for attending the classes in the MA. And also at the same time, you can either uh, take uh, beginner level courses in one language of your choice offered by the department, or uh, study at a more advanced level if you already have prior knowledge. So that is quite uh, free and, and up to you to make up your own uh, structure. Um, I would just like to spend a few words about our um, research culture. Uh, so as I, as I mentioned, we, we have a, a wide range of academic expertise uh, in our department uh, with experts in uh, Korean, Chinese, and, and Japanese. You can study um, all areas and all pay periods that uh, deal and, and pertain to the study of these uh, regions. But what is also particular uh, here at SNOAS is that we have um, quite a, an, uh, a nice mix of, uh, of uh, academics researching and teaching on modern and contemporary aspects of, uh, of these regions. So uh, for example, myself, I, I, um, I specialize in modern and contemporary Japanese literature and pop culture. So uh, together with core modules and study skills modules, I teach um, courses on modern Japanese literature. For example, uh, next term I'm teaching a course in literature that is uh, focusing on uh, post-war from post-war to the post, uh, from the post-war era to the present day, and focusing on uh, writing from minorities in Japan, so from uh, socially and ethnically marginalized groups, for example, uh, social outcasts or uh, Korean residents in Japan, uh, people from Okinawa that challenge ideas of uh, of a homogeneous identity of Japan, but also it's very much informed. Uh, by contemporary studies. So I present also less studied authors that are uh, very contemporary that deal in genres such as science fiction and others and fantasy, and also integrating that with, with notions of popular culture, especially cultures of youth, uh, anime and manga, because this is uh, what I do for my own research. And that also speaks to uh, the general approach that we have in the department of East Asian Languages and Cultures, which is research led teaching so that um, researchers actually teach things that they are um, particularly passionate and knowledgeable on while still uh, having the big picture and giving you the, the framework to grasp and analyze and think critically about texts and having a wider framework. But I will definitely stress that uh, we have a really wide range of experts in a wide um, bag of, of topics and, uh, and disciplines, literature, pop culture, cinema, history, language, linguistics, and so on and so forth. So this also speaks to uh, the general uh, approach in the department at decolonizing the curriculum, a buzzword in higher learning now. So to uh, dispute and confute the challenge of established norms in cultural aspects. So that's also, for example, the module on minority writing deals with that, the idea to uh, debunk uh, assumed notions of, of what, what should be studied, what, what makes really uh, great literature and so on. Uh, then we have a lot of resources such as the research centers. We have the China Institute, uh, the Japan Research Center, Korean Studies and Postcolonial Studies that um, are good because they uh, have 
uh, weekly and or bi-weekly seminars where you invite speakers and researchers from all over the world presenting their research and discussing uh, what is going on in, in the world of research in these regions. And it's good for us and for students to know what is going on because that all could also give you a good ideas about what you want to write about, things that you were not sure that you wanted to do, but you always wanted to do. Uh, and also to it's a, it's an, a, a possibility to meet other researchers. And uh, also we have a great library that is also on site and you can use every day until midnight and has a lot of, a lot of resources uh, for you to make the most of. So um, this is uh, generally, uh, what I had to say about our MA programs. I would uh, like to call uh, Xiaoning to possibly talk us more about research culture and her courses and anything else that she deems relevant. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so my name is Xiaoning Lu. I actually received my education in China all the way up to master degree. Uh, then I went on to uh, get my PhD in United States. I joined SOAS in 2010, so have been teaching and researching at the SOAS for a really long time. And this academic year, I'm convening and teaching a number of modules uh, for MA program. Uh, for instance, Contemporary Chinese Society, East Asian Cinema, uh, New Taiwan Cinema and Beyond. I also contributed to team teaching uh, in other modules, the core modules uh, mentioned by Filippo. So I want to get, give you a little bit of view about how our class really work. Uh, so for instance, for my contemporary Chinese society, uh, this year I deliver a one hour lecture online and the students just tune in because uh, for this term at least, uh, we have a hybrid, a blended learning. But for the second hour, we have a seminar. So I will meet students in classroom. We have a discussion and a group work, et cetera. Uh, in, in this class, I think um, uh, I introduced various uh, different topics. Uh, for instance, I've introduced uh, women and migration, environmental activism, uh, last week, we talked about the, polit the cultural politics of, of entertainment media in China. And next week, I'm going to introduce uh, the topic of a cyber, cyber nationalism uh, uh, in, in China. So there are a range of fascinating topics uh, which really address, um, address the social transformation, social cultural transformations in contemporary China. And in my class, um, most students are from European countries, uh, but we do have quite a number, quite a few from China and uh, Taiwan, um, and uh, actually overseas Chinese. Uh, some students actually, uh, they, they are Chinese, uh, Chinese American, and they came to London to, to study with us. Um, so it, it is it is really amazing to see students with from different backgrounds and bring their uh, knowledge experience together and to enrich our class discussion. Uh, I'm also the director of research in uh, in the Department of East Asian Languages and Cultures, and so now we want to further integrate uh, our research students research activity with. Uh, staff members. Uh, so we will hold, uh, for example, departmental research seminars. Uh, we will also uh, open certain research events to interested MA students. Um, I, I think uh, another thing I want to emphasize is um, what is what is good, great about our programs is its interdisciplinarity. Uh, if you study Chinese studies, MA Chinese studies, uh, you not only be able to uh, study modules on literature and culture, uh, you will also uh, have opportunities to learn, for example, gender and the nation in uh, East Asia or gender and the empire in early modern China. Uh, we have another module, which is quite nice. Uh, it's called um, nationhood and the competing identities in modern China. Uh, so if, we, if you go to our departmental website and uh, check the degree program, uh, you can find either Chinese study degree or Japanese study degree and uh, go to click on the tab and then you will see a complete list of modules. 
I think I'm going to stop here. I'm very happy to maybe um, answer some questions if you have any. Feel free either to speak up or type your questions in the chat. Uh, any questions? And in fact, I think our students, when they started in September, they, they most of them are very enthusiastic. But then now um, we are halfway through of the first term. And then many students realize the study here is very intensive. So now they're have, busy. They're yeah, busy think, with uh, writing papers. Yeah, I think we have one, one, one question. You want to speak up? Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just have a question. Um, so I'm interested in taking the MA Japanese um, translation or Japanese studies. Uh, and I wanted to know in terms of interdisciplinary studies, would film studies be available as a separate degree option that I can take or is that something that I couldn't do? Um, do you mean with the intensive language? Um, yeah. Um, I think you can choose the film modules, but uh, your degree title will still be Japanese studies. Okay. So the degree title will not be film and media studies, and that's the difference. Um, but uh, of course, you can take film modules. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, mm -hmm. because so the the MAs right that we talked about they are uh, based in our department so. Um, combinations that so those you can take modules you can write your dissertation on film that is perfectly fine uh, mm -hmm. but then the, the title of the degree would be MA Japanese Chinese or Korean um, a different thing which I think also leads uh, into uh, the, the second part of, of the presentation is that you can other combined degrees deal with us uh, in terms of the language right so you can write uh, do studying the MA um, in, in a certain program, and then you have the intensive language part that is administered by us. And these programs are, um, as you can see from the slide, they are um, spread across two years, right? Mm -hmm. So, and is there a dual degree, or is is that different? Uh, excuse me. Sorry, is is there a, a dual degree that you can take with um, uh, intensive language? Uh, these are called like this, yeah, and then you can see that now in the slide, I will mention that in a second. The dual degree uh, term thusly is another thing that is available between Japan and Sofia University, but that is another thing. Uh, so I will just mention this and then I will get to uh, Elena's question. Thank you. Um, so um, I will just briefly go through this um, the intensive language program because uh, Dr. Kirsch, as I mentioned, was uh, is more expert on this, so you are welcome to, to reach out to her after this. So uh, this is the a, a combined program, right, with language and, and another program of study, and they have uh, their structure. So um, it offers intensive language training and the post-credit level, uh, and with an accredited summer school in China, Japan, and Korea, which is part of the, uh, which is, uh, a, which you, the students take between in the summer between year one and year two, and that is makes up for 45 credits abroad, right? And it can be combined with the number of MA programs. So um, it can be pa paired with what we just saw. So Japanese studies, Korean studies, and Chinese studies. So you take that pathway plus the 45 credits abroad, of course, and language uh, and the dissertation. And the same can be done with Korean studies and Chinese studies. You can have also pairings with other uh, degrees uh, that are, um, for example, not uh, fully in the department. For example, linguistics, migration and diaspora studies, social anthropology or history. So you have requirements uh, in discipline credits from that side. And then also you do the language training in our department and the summer, the 45 credits abroad. Uh, one important thing that I should point out is that uh, enrolling on the intensive language programs 
language wise can only be done at beginners level so you will start from beginner level courses in those languages you cannot start with you know, japanese four already yes elena hi can you hear me yes okay um so earlier did i hear you say that the dissertation was ten thousand words ten thousand yes ten thousand yeah not twenty thousand like it says online for most ma dissertations uh, on at soas i haven't seen what it says for uh, soas that's just what it's 10, 10, i can confirm okay yeah. thank yeah. you Chief. i was like okay is it yeah it's the right number <laughs> <laughs> and um the other thing i wanted to ask was i've seen on the website there's like suggested reading and then there's core reading yeah so um are you expected to do any of this reading before you start the the academic year um so that depends on um when your class takes place right so uh the the, um, the readings that you find on on the website are those for indication of course as you can see uh courses change courses are updated and so um the the reading list will be given to you by your module conveners before the module starts the core reading you're not expected to have read everything before the course starts not not at all uh, the core readings uh, will also be uh, divided by weeks so that each week is on a certain topic and the the convener and the teacher or teachers depending if it's a co taught module will give you um, indications in well in advance of what they recommended uh, what the the required readings, the core readings for uh, that particular topic and week are, and those you should prepare in advance because they help you go through the lecture and also uh, they're the object often of the following seminar and discussion. The suggested uh, ones are suggested, so these are things that the, co the conveners and teachers think that are uh, really helpful uh, and that for for widening your understanding and critical analysis and also cover some of the aspects that you might want to write your term paper on so okay so you will be told when you're expected to read these things as uh, students will be told yeah basically yeah the common but the the common the common practice is that uh, each course will have a list of core readings uh, divided by topics and weeks okay uh, Thank yeah, you. if I may, I can share my screen. Actually, I cannot. <laughs> I can see you. Uh, no, I want to share the screen of the. Uh, uh, okay, let me. I can unshare. Maybe I can share. I un unshare mine. Yeah, if you can share one of the module uh, on the Moodle, they will see the structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so normally, uh, the core that required readings uh, uh, for my module, I would uh, always advise students to completely required readings before attending the class. Yeah. Um, for the suggested reading, you know, you, you can read them if you want to write an essay on that topic, if you want to further your understanding. But otherwise, actually, uh, as I mentioned, the study here is very intensive. You will find too much reading. It's really hard to juggle <laughs> in the end. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I, I, my question was, um, I'm, I'm a, are students expected to read the core and suggested stuff before the course starts? But no, if you're no, telling no. me you'll be told when to read it and just be prepared for the class, I understand. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yeah. So um, before I get to the next questions, uh, I will just share this uh, um, important slides with, where you have all the uh, specific contacts of the module uh, of the program conveners for the intensive language. So uh, for intensive language and Chinese, uh, you can uh, contact Lex Xuan. For Japanese, uh, there is Chrisel Diskirsch, uh, our head of department until the end of the year, uh, and then Barbara Pizziconi from uh, January. And similarly for Korean, Anders Carlson, and then uh, Grace Co. Okay, so if you have specific questions about these programs, uh, I would encourage you to get in touch with them. Uh, yeah, Emma. Oh, uh, yeah. So I was wondering because you said that, or maybe I misunderstood that um, 
if you take like both the, uh, for example, I'm interested in the Chinese study master. Uh, so if you take that and the intensive language program, you start from the basics or? In language, know. yes. In language, yes. For the intensive language programs, the language part can be done only at beginner level. Okay, uh, but like in the course, like the Chinese master, there's already like part the advanced Chinese. Yeah. And I was wondering if maybe you knew like uh, at what level it usually starts, like the, I don't know, HSK or something like to, to know where um, you well, start. I'm not an expert on the equivalence of, of the Chinese standards. Uh, maybe then Xiaoning knows more about that or, or otherwise, yeah. Uh, I think now most of our audios uh, are in, uh, inclusive because we we have students from other programs, for instance, from Japanese program. They are also taking my contemporary Chinese society module or cinema module. Uh, so most of the readings are in English and even the films have English subtitles. So, um, but of course, you if you want to work on Chinese primary sources, uh, you can you, you should have a certain level of Chinese proficiency. Uh, otherwise, don't, don't worry, you, can, you still can take the modules. Um, yeah, and I don't okay. really know the HSK level because my, <laughs> my no. colleague would know better. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, do, do oh. get in touch with Lick for okay. this matter. Thank you, because I was actually interested, like my ideal career path would be like teaching Chinese to mm. um, yeah. other students. Uh, both Chinese like the language and like uh, contemporary society. And I was wondering whether like this course is like the path I should be taking because I, I don't want to start from a basic level mm -hmm. because yeah. I already graduated from- Yes, uh, from do get in touch so. with Li Xuan, my colleague, and she mm -hmm. is teaching all different Chinese language modules. So she is really the okay. expert. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I think we have a Chen, Chen Yu. Um, yeah, thanks both for, <clears throat> sorry of my throat. Um, yeah, I've got a question about, because I'm quite interested in uh, Japanese food uh, with Japanese language. And uh, I want to apply for the um, part-time MA uh, of um, anthropo uh, anthropology of food with yeah. uh, intensive uh, Japanese language. Um, but I want to know if I'm working at the moment full time, can I do it in the evening for the part time course or how will it, uh, if I'm going to apply for the part time uh, study for this MA, how will the schedule be um, over the four years? Um, so schedule wise, then, of course, there is a degree of uh, adapting to right with how the world is, especially now we have a lot of lectures online. Um, yeah, and so also some many courses are are in the afternoon and evening, so it also depends on that. In yeah, the, I think on the website it might say that if you take it uh, part time, it's during daytime, but it means I, I I think it's quite flexible there. Do you have I think normally uh, normally part time students will spend a double time. Uh, Full time mm -hmm. master students uh, usually one and a half a year to complete the degree. Yeah, and uh, but a uh, full time two to three years. And uh, no, I have students working, but they don't. They have to adjust their work schedule. Uh, so some modules, for example, East Asian cinema is in the morning, so that day you have to uh, attend lecture. If it's in person, you have to you have to come to the campus to attend okay. the lecture in person. Okay. Do you have any courses over the weekend? Uh, for no, school? No. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, another question uh, relevant to anthropology of food with this language course is, um, I know there will be, like, if I'm going, because I'm in, quite interested in the food, will the, this course, if I choose Japanese as an intensive language, will the food, uh, food study also focus on um, Japanese food, or it will be a general uh, food study? Uh, well, that um, that depends on the structure of the program, mostly because that the anthropology of food, the, the part of the anthropology of food is not organized by us. So 
Yeah, I, I think it's general. It's not going to focus on Japanese food only. Uh, it's an anthropology department course. So you okay. can introduce you methodology can, and cover different topics. You can write on yeah. Japan, of course. That can be um, your MA dissertation topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like something I'm thinking about. Mm. Um, and also uh, relevant to the summer school, because I know there will be summer schools with this intensive language courses. Um, if I apply for the part time and, and to do it, um, will I be able to schedule, for example, one summer to do it? Or do you know how will it uh, schedule then? Um, I think it's usually one summer, but uh, please do check with the convener. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's my question. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Uh, Ela Elena? Hi, yeah. Um, just to let the other girl that talked about doing Chinese, I spoke to, well, on, like I emailed one of the other teachers and they said that there is a test that can be taken when you get there and then that can determine which um, class you should take from there. Uh, just if that girl's still listening <laughs> and um, thank you so much <laughs> and um, I wanted to ask so how many well if you if you know roughly how many hours a week will be in lectures on campus and how many hours a week will be online um, well that is that is not easy to to predict uh, because things change and you have to adapt to right mm. uh, government and, and yes. standards and things like that. Well, what how I many can, hours is it all together? That that. Um, I mean, usually, usually um, the discipline modules uh, in our department are uh, fifteen credits. So um, I'm talking a discipline, right? So not not language specifically. So in those, you have a lecture and then usually one hour seminar. So it's two hours per week. Uh, at the moment, um, we're, we're delivering uh, lectures online, as, as Sioni also said, and the seminars are on campus. Um, so how many modules? So if you are taking um, four modules in your first year, of in the first term, uh -huh. that's normally, uh, so you have a four hours online for lecture and a four hours on campus for seminar. Uh, if, so the current, if the current arrangement continues, but maybe you should all come back to campus. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's like rough. It's it's eight hours a week, a combination of yeah on campus and online. Yeah. So okay. For example, in the MA Chinese Studies, as we saw, it's one hundred and eighty credits. So you take uh, sixty out for the dissertation. So you have one hundred and twenty, and you divide it by fifteen, and then you have roughly a number of unless you. Yeah, uh, because 30 credit modules run mm. for the whole year. So then you have a rough number. Eight, of, of yeah, modules. eight modules. Yeah. So eight times 15, it's 120. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, last question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chain, is that an old hand or do you have another question? No, I don't have any more questions. Oh, thank you okay. so much. No problem. Uh, Laura, is David here to talk about the... We have another question from Ong Loy. Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry for interrupt. Uh, I would like to, because I'm interested in the Chinese, uh, in, the, in the Chinese program, and actually I live in Hong Kong and I raised in Hong Kong, and studied in Hong Kong as well. So uh, I would like to know, uh, for the term Chinese, is it, uh, because I write uh, traditional Chinese instead of the more popular simplified Chinese, I am a native a Cantonese speaker instead of a Punhua speaker. So uh, is, I would like to know is the traditional Chinese writing, handwriting, and the uh, Cantonese is also acceptable under, under the term Chinese. Yeah. Oh, okay, so for the discipline modules, all our assignments need to be written in English. So okay. all the essays, you need to write in English. Um, of course, you can use primary sources, Chinese primary sources, but you should also be able to translate them into English as well. Um, we have some pre-modern Chinese module, for example, legend, folklore, and those deal with the pre-modern uh, text. So yeah, I hope that answers okay. your question. Yeah, but uh, if I'm talking about like the uh, language intensive course, like uh for, for the people like me as a as a native speaker oh, of Canada, oh, uh, would, would it be uh, will, I, will i be eligible to take those courses 
or yeah. Oh, actually, I need, you need to email Lick Shren. Mm. I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. No, 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 no. sorry. Uh, yeah, that, that's all right. That's all right. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I would just like to um, have a brief uh, mention about the uh, Taiwanese study. So, um, uh, stuff in here now. Um, no, I don't think Daffod is here. Um, okay, then I'll. Uh, he provided us with the video, and I'll just play that for the students. Hope it works. <laughs> The Soas Taiwan Studies program was established in uh, the late 1990s. Uh, and over the last two decades, we've developed into by far the world's leading center for Taiwan studies in terms of uh, teaching, publication. Um, our Taiwan Studies teaching program. We've got the only MA in Taiwan Studies in the English speaking world. And we have the widest range of Taiwan Studies courses at the postgraduate uh, level. And we do have some undergraduate courses, for example, a year-long course on Taiwan politics and international relations. Uh, again, it's the um, only such course in, in the world. What I really love about teaching at SOAS in the Taiwan program is the fact that I can teach what I research. I'm a specialist on Taiwan's elections and uh, party politics. And I can use what I research and bring it into the classroom. Prior to coming to SOAS, I studied Chinese for one year. And so I knew that I wanted to continue studying China and Chinese. And um, so I looked at I looked at SOAS. And as it turned out, SOAS also offered uh, courses on Taiwan. In the end, the reason I came to SOAS was precisely because of the courses on Taiwan that they offered. I think the first uh, motive that I came to SOAS is because of my career, because I was an educator back in Singapore. I have been working for three years, so I think uh, it's kind of for me to learn something new, so that uh, I chose SOAS. I think what is really significant is in the Taiwanese politics class because we have students uh, from Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, China, and UK itself. So it's like whenever we share our perspectives, we learn from each other. It really like opened my eyes at how to uh, view politics in different ways. When students first arrive at SOAS, what we'll tell them is that over this year, you're going to meet a number of the key figures in the Taiwan Studies academic field. You're going to be meeting people on your reading list. The kind of themes that we'll cover in the events will be uh, linked to what we cover in courses. This is not a, a ordinary academic institution. This is a, a center that really draw talent into it. And many, many uh, scholars from the world, when they come to visit Europe, they really love to come to London because they want to come to SOAS. For example, last year, we have gone 46 public events. This really provides a certain kind of stage for Taiwan and Taiwanese related uh, scholars. In June 2015, we held the second World Congress of Town Studies at SOAS. It was a fantastic event and we attracted more than 80 scholars from all over the world. And I think a student really took away with them from this particular event, some research ideas, some academic contacts, and even scholarship opportunities. The Center of Taiwan Studies organizes a whole range of events throughout the year. These include movie screenings, academic talks, and perhaps most memorable sessions with high-ranking Taiwanese politicians. So in my final year at SOAS, uh, we had the chance to attend a talk by former Taiwanese Premier Frank Xie. And at the end of the talk, he stayed on for about half an hour, and uh, our students had the, had the opportunity to talk to him immediately and directly, which was an amazing opportunity. 
create this kind of atmosphere and this kind of excitement that people want to share their ideas and their research with our students and academics here. Once you are here, you sense the energy. This is the place to be. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you had an overview there. Uh, these are some uh, information about this is some there is some information here about the Taiwan Studies program. Um, unfortunately, it seems like that um, Dr. Fell had some technical problems uh, logging in. So I'm glad that uh, you could see this uh, brief overview. Uh, here are some information. There's a leading center for Taiwan studies and academic events, and then you have a wide range of Taiwan studies uh, module. There's Taiwanese cinema and other bits. And for any questions on this, so please do write to do get in touch with David Fell, df2 at soas.ac.uk. Um, yeah, I mean that's about it with the. Um, with our main uh, offer, and here you have uh, an overview of some of the careers that our uh, recent graduates have undertaken. Uh, see uh, advances, proficiency in the languages of China, Japan, and Korea. The demand for that has uh, greatly increased in recent years, especially looking for uh, comp people with competencies in cultural mediation, knowing and cultural awareness about dealing with different cultures and regions so uh, with our degrees not only do you get um, a specific uh, education in aspects of your choice but you also get transferable skills that work outside of the single modules and enable you to be either a translator working in communication uh, working in different kinds of relations with uh, these regions in east asia and here's a list of some of the uh, career paths that our students have taken. So I would stop here uh, and um, um, so um, do we have one question or is, is that an old hand? Oh, maybe it's an old hand. Uh, okay, that's... Uh, that's Sorry. That's okay. Moment. Okay. Thank you, Onloy. Yeah. So that's uh, all from us. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you for all who participated, academic staff, uh, support staff, and students. And please, if you have any questions on our programs, do get in touch with the different conveners or even module teachers. Have a look at the modules and structures. Look at what might interest you. I hope to see many of you at SOAS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, B for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you for your presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.